Nicaragua continues to move toward authoritarianism. A Nicaraguan Supreme Court ruling will allow incumbent Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega, the Sandinista Party leader, former Soviet client, vociferous critic of the United States, and current Hugo Chavez acolyte, to run for another term in 2011. Three liberal judges were not summoned to the meeting at which the decision was made. Instead, the Sandinistas called in three replacement judges to guarantee their preferred ruling. The Supreme Court's action makes a mockery of Nicaraguan democracy. Unfortunately for the Nicaraguan people, the anti-Sandinista opposition parties are tainted by corruption and prone to infighting. In the 1980s, the US government spent huge amounts of money and adopted controversial policies to support the cause of Nicaraguan democracy. Today, supporting that cause would require much less from the United States, but the Obama administration must first make Nicaragua a priority. Thus far, it has not. Famed singer-songwriter Miley Cyrus recently said, quote, it's a party in the USA. Unfortunately, as we can see from this editorial, it's not a party in Nicaragua. The recent farce of a ruling has allowed Sandinista leader Daniel Ortega to stay in office for another term beyond his limits. This is an affront to Nicaraguan democracy, and I entirely agree with the author of this editorial when he says that the United States needs to make Nicaragua a priority. And I say so for three main reasons. Firstly, because of the domino policy in world affairs. Secondly, because of the volatile regional politics. And lastly, because of volatile international politics. So let's look at my first point. Firstly, the domino policy in world, affair, uh, world affairs is a policy proposed during the communist period of the Cold War, when regions of the world, such as Latin America, were, were volatile and tense. This was the principle that if one country were to fall, in this case to communism, it could lead to all the others falling. In the same way, if one country, such as Nicaragua, were to fall to authoritarianism, it is possible that other regions in this tense area could also fall. In the 1980s and the Cold War, the United States worked very hard to make sure even small countries, such as Nicaragua, would stay democratic. Unfortunately, as Nicaragua has started its slip towards authoritarianism, the United States has not yet done anything, and it needs to do so because, due to the domino, due to the domino effect, other countries could follow after it. Due to, my second point, the volatile regional tensions in the area. Nicaragua is very close to Venezuela and Colombia, up at the top north part of South America. Venezuela and Colombia are two countries that have been engaged in tension after the Venezuela has been known to support the FARC, or the Religious Armed Forces of Colombia, a paramilitary organization that has been working to undermine the Colombian government. In fact, this led to such problems that President Hugo Chavez of Venezuela and the President of Colombia actually got into a shouting match that had to be physically broken apart by President Luis Inacio de Silva of Brazil at a recent meeting of the OAS. In fact, things have become so bad that the OAS, an organization normally known for its uh, toothless approach to politics, actually issued a scathing critique of Venezuela, according to the Wall Street Journal on February 25th, 2010. This action shows that Venezuela has been getting out of control for the region. And so we can see that Venezuela and Colombia are among, among others very close to Nicaragua in volatile, tense situations that could be made what much worse by, a, the, by the first domino of Nicaragua falling. But not only close by in the region are problems, but there are also international tensions that could bring, that could bring problems to the table, according to my third point. In fact, there have been many scenarios, such as an alliance between Iran and Hugo Chavez's Venezuela, which, has, which could, the uh, alliance of their oil reserves could potentially bring, and could potentially bring problems, especially if Iran were to set up nuclear reactors, potentially, in Venezuela, which is the possibility brought up by Jamie Darumbloom, the Costa Rican ambassador to the United States, who is in fact the author of this editorial. But not only this uh, alliance of rogue nations is a potential source of tension that could, be, uh, that, could be that could be brought up by a fall in Nicaragua, but also uh, tensions in the region of Latin America where many countries are rising in power. For example, Brazil, according to a special report uh, in The Economist, November 2009, has actually become the second largest uh, 
has actually had the second largest amount of foreign direct investment after such countries as China. In fact, foreign direct investment in Brazil has risen 30%, while the rest of the world in this recession has fallen 14%. This growing economic power in the region has led to Latin America becoming less dominated by the United States, culminating, in recent, or culminating recently with the formation of a new organization of Latin American and Caribbean states that is an organization, of the Amer that is an organization like the OAS, only excluding America and Canada. So, in conclusion, we can see that Nicarag the fall of Nicaragua could lead to a domino effect that could have catastrophic results in uh, both the volatile region and in volatile international politics. So, while it may be a party in the, U in the USA, as Miley Cyrus says, it is not a party in Nicaragua. Thank you.